So let's, let, uh, sorry. In this lesson, we learned the method of factor polynomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not 1. So everything we've been doing before, we just had just an x squared. Now we're going to have like a 2x squared or a 3x squared. So it makes things a little bit different. So real quick, I'll let you kind of do this on your own. Just go ahead and FOIL those out and just kind of see what you get. It's just giving you that pattern of what to expect. I'll kind of do them with you as you do them. trying to do is we're trying to take this piece and this piece and bring it back to here to the factor. Okay, that's where we're trying to go. Okay, so in terms of the algebra tiles, we don't spend too much time on these, so let's talk about it briefly here. So write the polynomial expression for the group of algebra tiles shown. So I have how many x squareds? So I have 2x squared plus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, good, plus 7x plus 6. Okay, and so it wants to form this in a rectangle again. So if I do a rectangle, the rectangle that we came up with was your 2x squared. I know these aren't very good, I'm sorry. These are x's. These are x squared. And then we did. And then we have our six pieces fit right here. So x, 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 one, 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 one. And remember, these are all dark. Okay, so they're not white, they're not negative. Okay, so by forming a rectangle, we can kind of figure out what it is in terms of being factored. So how would you read this? So what is this length here? Like what's this length? X. What's this length? One, one, one. So what is that? Good. And what is this one? Yeah, X plus two. That's what you said, right? <laughs> X plus two. Okay, good, all right, let's keep trucking along here. All right, so let's get to page two. All right, so let's look at one more little thing with algebra tiles. So this factor this using algebra tiles. So we want to kind of make our own rectangle again. So we're going to make our, um, we're going to have five x squareds put together. Okay, it's not very good, but. And then we're going to have seven x's. There's five of them. And then we're going to have two here. And that leaves me with two spots here for just my spot. So x squared, x squared, x, x. I know those don't look like it. One and one. So that's how it would fit in terms of a rectangle-ish. All right, so we have x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 6x. Oh, nope. Let me recount that here. We have 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. We have 5x up here. And then we have 1, 2, so 1 and 1. So we have a 5x plus 2. And then going the other way, we have an x and a 1. So there it is, factored with the algebra tiles. Okay. Now to set up what you need to do today, just so we get ahead of our, well, so we can get ahead of ourselves, is we need to be good at factoring by grouping. Well, good news is we have done factoring by grouping. Decomposition is what today's factoring is called. 
Whenever you have a number in front, you're going to use factoring by decomp if you cannot GCF. So I want to remember, we still want to look. Can I pull anything out here? Well, no, I couldn't, so the five stuck. So I'm going to do decomp. Okay, so your options for factoring are decomp, inspection, and difference of squares. Okay, so when, when do we use inspection? <laughs> use, okay, so let's get this down real quick before you guys get lost in everything. Okay, inspection is when you're at, you have x squared plus 3x plus 2. When this right here is a 1, that's when you use inspection. Okay, difference of squares is when you have two squares or a binomial. So this is inspection. This is difference of squares. And then today's is when we have whatever. 2x squared plus 8x plus 11. This is called decomposition or decomp. Okay, that's our three methods of factoring. Okay, any questions on that? I had a lot of good questions last class, so let's see if you guys can answer. All right, so let's review real quick. Review of factoring by grouping. So remember, factoring by grouping, we want to group them into two like binomials, and then we want to GCF them. Remember that? So what does 6x squared and 3x have in common? 3 and? X. So that becomes 2x plus 1. What's 8x and 4 have in common? 4. 4. That gives me 2x plus 1. Remember the 2x plus 1's match, so we may write them as 1 and push the 3x plus 4 together. That's our factoring by grouping. That's the main component of doing decomp, and we'll get to that later, but you need to be good at your factoring by grouping. Okay, so then this one, again, same thing, binomials. Okay, these have what in common? 3 and x, so that gets me 4x plus 3. What do these have in common? And we're going to make it a negative 2. If the first one's negative, you pull out a negative. 4x plus 3, those match, push the other two together, and there you go. Right here? Where at? There? Where, where are you talking about the positive 3? Like, you talking about here? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so factoring using decomposition. So first off, you got to be good at doing the factoring by grouping. Okay. Um... But the thing is, is so it's going to walk you through here. So 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Um, if I simplified this, what would it be? It would be 11x. And so this one we were just doing up here, the point is now, is like, well, how, how do we break up into a 3 and an 8? Okay, that's the, that's the thing with decomp that you need to kind of figure out. And that's the, the trick, if you will. Okay, we got to figure out how to break up the middle into two things, because 3 plus 8 is what? It's 11, so we're not changing anything. We're just kind of breaking it up, okay? So, um, but how, so how do we split them? Blah, blah, blah. We'll provide that in a second. Same thing here. I have 12x squared plus 9x minus 8x. Well, 9x minus 8x is 1x, which is what you get when you simplify, okay? So how do we do that? How do we break them up? <laughs> okay, so what you do is you use the AC method. And so what that means is you multiply the front and the back number. Okay, now that's when they're in correct order. Okay, don't forget A and C come from the number in front of X squared and the constant. That tells you how to break it up. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is, so what is A and C and A? 
2 and 6, right? Okay, 2 times 6 is what? Okay, to figure out what we're going to break seven up, or break this up into, it needs to add up to 7. So what multiple is a 12 out of the 7? 3 and 4. So that gives you what you're breaking it up to. So you have 4 now. So this is what's going to happen. We're breaking this 7 up into a 4 into a 3, like this. Because now we can do our grouping. Go ahead. This is the main point. So if you've got a question now, it's a great time to ask. So I multiply two... I multiply 2 times 6, I got 12. I need to break 12 up or factor the 12 that get to 7. That's 4 and 3. It does not matter where you put the 4 or 3. The way I do it is I put it with what it's most like. Like, does 2 go better with 4 or does 2 go better with 3? 4, right, because they have stuff in common. Same thing with the 3 and the 6, right? They have stuff in common. So I, I kind of group them that way so things are a little bit nicer, but you can go either way. Okay? Questions there before we keep going. Okay, so now I'm doing my GCF. These both have a 2x in common. That gives me x plus 2. That has a 3 in common. Gets you x plus 2. If these don't match, you did something wrong. Okay, we want them to match. Now that gives you your answer. Your factored answer is 2x plus 3, x plus 2. So we're done. That's your factored answer. Okay. So let's see if we have how much understanding we have. So Josh on uh, B, what are you going to do? Very first thing. What's your first thing you got to do? Split the, the middle up. But in order to figure out how we're going to split it, what did we do? Like what did we do here? Good. So five times two, right? Well, are multiples of ten that add up to seven. Five and two. Five and two. So I'm breaking this up to 5 and 2. So I'm going to go 5x squared, so we want 5 and 2, plus 5x, plus 2x, plus 2. Now we like that because we have 4. We can do grouping. They have a 5x in common. They have a 2 in common. Okay. That gives me 5x plus 2, x plus 1. Okay. Some fine details here. So let's go ahead and go through these. Okay, so remember, first step every time, AC. So 6 times negative 3, I get negative 18. Okay. We want that to be a multiple or combined to get 17. We want 18 and negative 1 there. Okay? Remember, 18 goes better with the 6 to me. So I'm going to go 6x plus 18x, sorry, 6x squared, minus x minus 3. It's important you keep your minuses there. Okay? So group, these have a 6x in common. That makes x plus 3. These have a negative 1 in common, x plus 3. Now, you got to kind of manipulate things to work for you. So, yeah, you can say, well, there's nothing I can pull out, but then we want this to match, right? So we would go ahead and change it anyways. We want it to be x plus 3. So that gives us the factored answer of 6x minus 1, x plus 3. Okay, part B, negative 24. Okay, I want to break that into negative 6, positive 4. So that's going to give me 3n squared minus 6n plus 4n minus 8. Group. I'm going to pull a 3n out. Gives me n minus 2. I'm going to pull a 4 out. Gives me n minus 2. And I'm done. And the last one, which a lot of you guys are kind of have a little trouble with, 12 times 1 is 12. Factors of 12 that add up to negative 8 is negative 6 and negative 2. They're both negative because the negative times the negative is a positive. So I get 12x squared minus 6x minus 2x plus 1. 
group. 12x squared, 6x has 6x in common. That gives me 2x minus 1. Now, this is the opposite of 2x minus 1. So if I want the opposite, I want to take out a what? The negative 1. It gives me 2x minus 1. And so then I have 6x minus 1, 2x minus 1. There we go. Okay, let's move this up here and do these last couple. All right, so this one we still have, what's my A and my C on part A? Yeah, it's still 15 and negative 2. Okay, first just doing this one backwards, which you can still do. 15 times negative 2 is a negative 30. What are factors of negative 30 that are 7 apart? 7, no, wait, 10 and 3. 10 and 3, okay, yep. So 10 and 3, and I want the 10 to be negative. So I'm going to go, um, I'll put the 3 at the 15, so I'm going to go 15 minus, or plus 3y minus 10y minus 2y squared. And then we're going to group. 15 and 3y have a 3 in common. That gives me 5 plus y. These have a negative 2y in common. That gives me 5 plus y. These matched again. Even though we did it backwards, they still matched. 3 minus 2y, 5 plus y. Questions there? Again, slow me down if I'm going too fast. Okay, so on B, should I go 15 times 10? Yeah, you can take a 5 out first. Let's pull a 5 out first. Let's make our lives a little bit easier. So I'm just going to take a 5 out. That gives me 3K squared plus K minus 2. Now do it. The 5 just hangs out. So now you're going to go 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Multiples of negative 6. Okay, 3 and 2 with a negative 2. 5 times 3k squared plus 3k minus 2k minus 2. Group. 3k squared and 3k. I have the 3k. Hopefully you see that. I got a 3k in common. Gives me k plus 1. They have a negative 2 in common. k plus 1. So your final answer, you have the 5 still, times the 3k minus 2, and the k plus 1. Okay? You could do, you could do it from the beginning if you wanted, but just be messier, it takes a little bit longer because the numbers are bigger. Alright, we got one more example. Okay, so now they're throwing an extra variable, which probably makes you really happy. You're starting to get it. <laughs> okay. Sure, yeah. Just don't go too far back. Okay, so now there's a y squared. Remember how we factored the y thing last time? We just knew that a y was going to be in the second part. Okay, so we're still going to do our same stuff. Okay, I'm still going to go, what's 2 times 2? Okay. What are multiples of 4 that add to negative 5? Negative 4, negative 1, right? So, but, okay, what was our middle usually? Just what? A number with an X. Now it's a number with an X. Y. y. Just make sure that's all that you have to make sure of. So now watch. You keep your 2X squared. You change this to negative 4XY, negative XY, plus 2Y squared. And then you just GCF still. So really, there's, I mean, it looks a lot harder, but honestly, it isn't. Any questions so far? Okay, so now, what do these have in common? What's a 2x squared minus a 4xy have in common? Good, a 2x gives me x minus 2y. 
because 4 divided by the 2 is a negative 2. The x came out. The y was left. Okay, now we're doing the one on the right. What's the one on the right have in common? Uh, yeah, we're going to say a negative y. Okay, because we, we always want to take a negative out if it's in the front. So I'm going to say a negative y. That gives me x, uh, excuse me, x minus 2y. So we push them together, 2x minus y, x minus 2y. Question? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this here. I want you guys to try B. See if you can, that's right. All right, so we're going to go 2 times negative 15. I get the negative 30. I saw a couple people have, uh, they broke it down correctly, but they had both of them negative. Only one's a negative. It would be the 10 because it's a negative 7. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and group these. So I'm going to go 2n squared minus 10nm plus 3nm minus 15m squared. Group. The first group has a 2n in common. Gives me an n minus 5m. Is that right? Second one, I'm going to take out a 3m. That gives me an n minus 5m. So they matched. We feel good. That's your answer in factored form.